Hi everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome to the Scrapbook and Cards Today YouTube channel. I am so happy to be here today with another installment of Clean and Simple. Today's project, a clean and simple card for winter. And where I live, winter is still in full effect in the upper Midwest. So let's jump in and build a simple winter card. The stamps I'm using today are from Gina K Designs and they are called Folk Art Snowflakes. So I'm arranging them on a piece of 110 pound Nina Solar White Classic Crest. I want there to be enough room so that I can add different colored inks to these snowflakes. Now what I'm going to do here is get my Misty tool all set up properly, bring in my embossing magic, just run that over the cardstock to remove any extra static or oil that might be on the cardstock. Got my embossing ink. This is also from Gina K Designs. It's really been my go-to ink of late. And I will use the Misty tool and press the door down to stamp. I like to bring in a Swiffer cloth because it just helps me to move smoothly and add smooth, even pressure so my hands just don't stick to the door. Now I'll add my powder, and this is Gina's white powder. I'm just going to sprinkle that over, and of course, you're not going to be able to see a thing just yet. But hold tight, hold tight, because it's they're there. The snowflakes are going to magically appear. I will tap off the powder, and just like that, there they are, ready for heat embossing. I'll get my heat tool nice and hot before I bring it to the cardstock, and then I'll quickly work around each image until each snowflake is smooth and melted and shiny. You can kind of see the shine there in the light. It shows up a lot better once we start adding ink. Now I'm going to use this blender brush. haven't used it yet, and I just figured because it's a blue shade, it will work well with blue inks so I don't forget what color I'm using. And I'm using three inks today from Gina. The first is Sea Glass, which is the lightest of the three. And I'm just going to bring it to the center of my first snowflake and work my way out. A very, very simple way to add color to any stamped image. Emboss resist is one of my favorite techniques because I feel like it's the simplest way to add color and it's kind of hard to mess it up. <laughs> and I like those kinds of uh, crafting projects because I think we can all relate to setting out to try something and it turns into a hot mess. And yes, it happens to me more than I will admit and I tend to not show that on camera. Thank you. The next color is Ocean Mist, and I'm going in here at the center again and just blending out the color. And then I'm also wiping off the excess from each snowflake with a paper towel, just because sometimes the ink will pool or stay on top of the actual embossed area because it's shiny and smooth and does not absorb that ink. So a good wiping of all of them and now I have three pretty snowflakes in subtle shades of blue, ready for die cutting. I've got the coordinating dies for this set, and I've taped them all into place with some purple tape. And these are really easy to line up. They don't take much at all. And the dies cut beautifully. And now I have three flakes for my project. Isn't that pretty? A nice bit of color, but easy. Next, I'll cut out a card panel using one of my favorite die sets. This is the A2 Layers die from Waffle Flower. It has different sizes to help you cut out different card panels. And now I'll take this panel to stamp my sentiment. I'm going to use Sending Winter Hugs, and I've just kind of arranged the snowflakes where I think I want them to go so that I can stamp that sentiment and it will be nestled right in with the grouping of snowflakes. And again, I'm repeating the process. I hit that paper with some embossing magic, stamping with clear ink, but this time I'm going to use fine detail gold powder. I just thought it would be nice to add a little warmth to the coolness of the blues. Silver could have worked too, and that would have been nice, but I really did think it needed a tiny bit of warmth, and I think gold embossing powder adds that. If you ever have extra powder that does stick, just take a dry brush. I keep this brush only for that purpose and then I will melt the powder until it is all shiny and smooth. Next, I'm going to create my card base, and this is going to be top folding. It will be five and a half by four and a quarter wide, which is actually a US A2 measurement. Although when I folded it, I couldn't figure out why this looked so big. I actually cut my piece of cardstock wrong. It's actually, I think it's like four and a half inches. I'm gonna trim that down off camera later, but I take 
purple tape, double it back, and I tape my cards closed because this cardstock is 110 pound. It's so heavy that it pops open. And I need to be able to see exactly where I'm placing things, especially with a card project like this, which it's white on white, so it's kind of hard to get it all lined up evenly. And once I do and press that down, you'll see it's got that nice little framing margin all around the card project, which I really love. I'm going to add my snowflakes, and I'm going to use a little bit of Gina's dot adhesive. I really like this dot runner. And I placed the first one down. I wanted it to hang just a tiny bit into that margin because I just think that's cool when things break out of their contained space. I'm going to add the second snowflake, just kind of nestle it in. And I've got a little bit of foam adhesive, thin foam adhesive from Scrapbook Adhesives on the back of this snowflake, and I'm layering that in as well. What I'm trying to do here is just create this cluster on the card. And I thought it would be fun to fill in some of the little areas with a cascade of very simple gold confetti. So that way you get some coolness, but you also get some warmth. And my technique is really simple. Liquid adhesive, dab it down, and just use my reverse tweezers and my craft pick to place the sequins. And now I've got a, like a cascade that leads the eye through the cluster. I think it's very simple, but again, this is a really easy technique and emboss resist can be done with so many different types of inks and the results are gonna be fun and it's gonna make it look like you know exactly what you're doing with color. Thanks so much for watching today. We would love to have you become a subscriber to the Scrapbook and Cards Today YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below so you don't miss the next time we post.